Let's now do <clears throat> the exact same uh, system, proficient example, but this time let's model it using a selected signal assignment. Okay, so uh, to begin, this is going to be a separate simulation. So what I want to do is I want to come and create its own separate folder. So I'm going to go ahead and create new folder, and I'm going to call this proficient ex, and I'm going to call it select sig assign. Okay, now it's the exact same port definitions and system names, so I can use the same test bench as from before. So I'm just going to copy and paste it from uh, a prior example. You can certainly download it from the website again, though. But I'm going to have a proficient example, TB. <clears throat> All right, so I'm ready to create my new file, my new system. So let's go ahead and start up Model Sim. And I'm going to start by saying, let's see here, let me start by saying File New Project. So let me resize this so you can see it. File new project and I want to make sure to browse to the right location so I'm going to be in select a signal assignment that's my folder I'm working in and I'll go ahead and name it all capital letters projects just so I know which file is the project file I say okay it asks me would you like to add an existing file I say absolutely I want to add my test bench so make sure I'm in select signal assignment proficient example DB I say okay and then I want to create a new file and this is going to be proficient example and it's going to give it the VHDL uh, type <clears throat> or extension and now I'm ready to go. Okay, so I've got my two files and just to make sure everything is is operational, I double click on the test bench, I make sure there's a little VHDL in there, I double click on my proficient example system and there's nothing in here. So I'm now ready to model and I could copy and paste the entity from prior examples but I just I want more practice typing this in just to to go through it. So entity proficient X, that's the system name, is. My ports are X, Y, Z, they're all scalars, common delimited, and they have they are mode in, type bit, all of them. I do a semicolon there, I go F is my output, and it is going to be a mode of out and a type of bit, and then on an entity, I close the parentheses on that last one, semicolon, and I say an entity. All right, that was easy, that was my entity definition. And now I'm gonna do my architecture, and I need a, a unique name so I'm going to call it the same thing but with an underscore arc on it so I know it's the architecture and I link it to the proficient X is okay all right so now I go begin I'm gonna come down here and go end architecture <clears throat> and this will be a, I have enough now to actually compile it so I go ahead and save and compile and I make sure there's no typos so far so everything's good to go and now what I want to do is do a selected signal assignment so a selected signal assignment is even a more compact way to model a truth table or you know logic but it's got one little th thing that'll catch you the way that it works is you say with and then you open parentheses and you put, I'm going to type input right here. Uh, now that's not the variable name. I'll come back and replace that. <clears throat> and then what you do is you say select. And then you say, you give the assignments. So for example, in this situation, I'd go F gets assign a zero. And then I do keyword when, and then I give it <clears throat> the input code. Okay, so right here is where I put the input value. All right. So what I want to do is, with a selected signal assignment, the input can only be a single variable name. Okay, And that's an issue because our inputs are actually uh, scalars. So we know that they're three bits, and we, in reality, what would be great is if I could list them as 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, and I could say something like, F gets assigned a 0 when X, Y, Z is equal to 0, 0, 0. And so that would allow me to do something like this. So when... Zero, zero, zero. Okay, so in order to do that, I have to somehow create a three-bit version, a three-bit vector that is the version of X, Y, and Z. And I do that simply with a uh, by creating a new signal, and then I concatenate X, Y, and Z. All right, so how do you do that? Well, you come up into this space right here. Before the begin statement is where you declare things. So you declare new signals internal to the architecture. You declare subsystems you're going to call components. Uh, you declare constants. And this is where you declare things. It's not necessarily functionality. Functionality comes down here. Up here is where you declare. OK, so I'm going to declare something. And let's just call it XYZ. <clears throat> and that represents kind of, it's a new name. Complete. You could call it anything you want, underscore vector, whatever. and Actually, you do keyword signal, you give it the name, and then you got to give it a type. Now, the type we're going to do is bit underscore vector, 
and we want to go 2 down to 0, and those are the indexes, and that allows me to say this is an, a new 3-bit th vector. Okay, well that's great, uh, but what I need to do now is I need to actually concatenate x, y, and z onto this thing, and that is functionality. So that happens after the begin statement. So what I do is I come down after the begin, and the first thing I want to do is go x, y, z, and that's my new signal, and I want to just simply assign it x concatenated with y concatenated with z. And what that does is it just takes those three signals, <clears throat> combines them, and puts them into this new variable name or signal name. And the reason I did that is because now when I come in my selected signal assignment, I can simply go x, y, z, and I can look at the three bits at a, t at a time. Okay. All right. So life is good here, and I'm gonna go ahead and put a comma, and then I just simply list the next uh, condition. So when I want a one, when it's zero zero one, and you can start doing some serious copying and pasting here. So let me go ahead and let's get the copying and pasting going here. So let's do the first four. So zero one, zero one, and I'll go ahead and do zero <clears throat> and zero. And the copy and paste really makes this go fast. So let's go ahead and update this and update this. All right, and then we'll go here and we'll grab these four. We'll come down here and we will have this. All right, so now let's update this and this and this. In this. Okay, so what I've updated here is my input codes. So I go 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1, 1. And now I want to, when I first start using these, I want to be very explicit about <clears throat> listing out the codes. Now that I have them done, the last one, I end the assignment by putting a semicolon there <clears throat> instead of a comma. And now I can go back and fill in the outputs that I want. So I know that I want one on row, you know, row 1, 0, 0, I want one on row 4. Uh, and I want one on row 7. Okay, so that should be it. So if I think about this, I've got my signal assignment here. Uh, my end architecture is right there. And I should be good to go. So let's go ahead and save it. And then let's compile it. And notice when I save it after a few seconds, uh, the status goes back to a question mark. So I go, I'll select it. And it may have compiled successfully. I can't see. Now, I didn't see that pop up. I, it did pop up, but I didn't see it. So I'm going to go ahead and right click on my transcript and go clear. And then I'm going to go compile, select it again so I can see it. It's like, okay, good. It came in. Let's compile our test match. And it's good. So let's see if this is an accurate functional description. Okay. All right. Here we go. So I'm going to go into my library. I'm going to go into work. And I'm going to double click on the test bench level. And that brings up the simulator. Okay, so now I've got my waveform window here, and I want to add all signals in region, and let's see what ends up happening. So I go add to wave signals in region, and region is at the test bench level, so it shows the inputs and the outputs of my actual device under test. And let's go ahead and run for 80 nanoseconds. I click run. I'm zoomed all the way at the end, so the first thing I want to do is go zoom full, and it looks like it's working. Okay, so I got... Uh, it's asserted, output is asserted from 1, 4, and 7. Again, let's go ahead and combine these scalars just for a display and make a uh, display vector called XYZ. And I'll go ahead and delete those. And now I'm got it, I've got it in a binary fashion, so that's even easier to see. And then just to take it one step further, let's go ahead and change them into unsigned. And I've done it. So this simulation worked perfectly. And I did it with a selected signal assignment. So just to review the selected signal assignment, uh, what you have to do is the selected signal assignment is a very compact way. Compact as in it takes less characters because you're not listing out when x is a 0 and y is a 0 and z is a 0. You provide an input, which is almost always a vector, and you list out the, the code associated with that. What's great about this is that uh, if you use a vector, it's it's more intuitive of what you're actually doing, and it looks pretty similar to a true tail. The, the catch on the selected signal assignment is that if your inputs don't come in as a vector, if they come in like scalars, you have to do this additional step, which is to actually create an internal vector and concatenate the inputs onto it. Okay, so as long as you remember to do that, the selected single assignment is a very compact and quick way to model combinational logic. And that's it.